Okay, uh, good day. So, this is our introduction to wind loads. First of the topic today is this uh, MWFRS and CNC. So, what is this CNC and MWFRS? So, uh, I will refer and I will use these two codes because these two codes are the same since NSCP 2015 based the code, no? The code of NSCP 2015 is based on mostly in ASC 7-16 terms of wind loading so first let's discuss this MWFRS then I will show you examples of what is their difference between them then so this is just a simple definition uh, anything that uh, is that stabilize the system or that supports the overall building of, of structure is the main wind force resisting system MWFRS in a simple words it is the it is the structure that resists the wind load. No? That is MWFRS. Then we have this what we call uh, components and cladding. These are the elements no? in a building that uh, supports the building envelope. So components are those that uh, in which cladding is attached. While cladding is the term that envelops the building. Uh, later, we'll see some examples. No? Or anything that is not qualified as part of MWFRS. So this is this definition is from ASC 7-16. No? You can see it in Chapter 26 of ASC 7-16. And in the definition part of NSCP 2015, Section 207A. So, uh, as you can see, uh, some examples of the main wind force resisting system or the system that resists the main wind force uh, that is MWFRS we have the cross bracing shear walls roof trusses now, uh, later we will see also roof trusses as part of uh, components and cladding but if your roof trusses is uh, one that resists no that, that resists the main wind or it's, it's part of the system that resists the main wind no? or let's say uh, your your system is a gable frame and one of the elements of your gable frame is a roof truss then and you consider the whole gable frame as as the system that uh, resists no resists the main wind then that roof truss is part of the MWFRS so also roof diaphragms like for example uh, if we consider uh, roof sheeting uh, if we say that roof sheeting has enough uh, bending on its uh, out plane then the roof diaphragm can be part of the MWFRS but if the roof diaphragm is not helping the overall structure in counteracting the main wind force or the lateral force from wind then it's not part of the MWFRS. So in, anyway, uh, I will give you some examples of what, what, what are this one. Next, we have the components and cladding. So as you can see, C and C is divided into two, into components and into cladding. So components uh, is the one no, that receive wind loads directly from cladding, while cladding is the one that mostly uh, act as the one that really receives the loading. So in short, uh, cladding is the one who receives the pressure and components is the one who receives the loading from the cladding. Uh, cladding, uh, the, the pressure from the wind was received from the cladding and uh, the cladding then in turn transferred that force into the components. So, uh, components can be also part of the MWFRS if they act as elements. No? As you can see here, if they directly... Uh, resist the loading no? like I said earlier uh, roof trusses can be also a component but at the same time it can also be a main wind force re reinforcing system part of the WFRS so to be clear let's I'll show you some examples so fasteners for lins so for lins in the roof so that is components while the cladding for that four lens is the roof covering or the bubong, no? Sin in Tagalog. Girts is just also a four lens, but it is uh, in the side of the walls. And uh, wall coverings is the one that is attached to the girts. 
Then we have the studs, also sheeting, uh, roof decking, and like I said earlier, certain trusses. And as you can see later, that uh, in designing long span roof truss, we consider the long span roof truss as MWFRS if it acts as one of the components, uh, sorry, if, if it acts one of the elements in resisting the lateral force due to the wind. But its elements, like for example, its cord, top cord, bottom cord, and some of their, uh, uh, let's say, diagonal members, horizontal, uh, vertical members, elements of trusses, uh, are designed using the components and cladding. So uh, we need to differentiate these two because uh, later I will show you uh, that both NSCP 2015 and ASC 7-16 gave us a different procedure for designing or, or getting a load, no? getting the wind load. So <clears throat> the procedure in MWFRS is different in components and cladding. So it is very important that we know what load so that uh, we can design uh, the elements in our structure. No? So if we don't know the loading, or if our loading is wrong, then our design of the elements of uh, our structure uh, will be, you know, uh, is also wrong. So it's, it's important to know the difference between components and cladding. So as you can see, truss is both MWFRS and CNC. Uh, if, uh, uh, I, just, I will just show you, no? So first, uh, let's try, no? Let's, I'll show you this one. So this is, uh, Tabs. Uh, okay, so as you can see, this is a whole gable frame or structure, no? So I, I'll try to isolate uh, no? the. So first, I will show you what is uh, components. Uh, so uh, I will show you what is the MWFRS. So uh, let's try to to select more walls. Then I'll just hide it. I'll then next select uh, property this frame section and I will uh, see uh, so as you can see this is the MWFRS these are the main wind force resisting system the the other element that I have hidden is both the components and cladding. As you can see, when you try to design the structure with loading of the MWFRS, remove. Uh, it is important to remove in your model the both the purlins and uh, uh, what you call that and the girts. So the girts is the uh, the one in this side earlier and the purlins. No, so. Uh, Although uh, we st in this e tabs, uh, it is necessary to have the no, to have the cladding or the roof sheeting as you can see earlier the color red. No? But this is what we call the MWFRS. So in 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 modeling the your structure, uh, try not to include the purlins here because uh, if you include the purlins here, the purlins became will become. Uh, as an element of the MWFRS, it will not become a component, no. So just remove. So if your structure is stable and it will pass, uh, for example, the drift and the displacement, then the additional purlins is just uh, what we call that uh, uh, additional support for the whole structure. So do not include the purlins if you intend it to be, become a part of components only. So let's try to ano, uh, let's try to get the other part. So select. So this is what we call the components and cladding. So
So I will try to hide first the uh, cladding, no? I will try first to do another. So this is, uh, as you can see here, this is uh, our components and cladding, no? So these are the components and cladding. So I will try to isolate the components first. So try to isolate the components first. So these are the components. As you can see, these are I I I, I use uh, I use channels. No? I use channels. You can also use zipper links. You can also use zipper links in this one so these are the purlins uh if if it uh if it supports the roof the roof sheeting or the bubong no or roof sheeting and it is girt this is what we call girt in the sides if it supports the wall wall sheeting so the wall sheeting and roof sheeting are all components so they they directly uh they directly receive the wind pressure and they are directly and they are supported by the components and these are the components so as you can see this is components so let's try to show uh okay sorry let's try to show uh the cladding now so select again the cladding So these are the claddings. Claddings are those uh, you can see they envelope, no? They they cover the whole structure. If in this case this is a covered, no? This is a covered warehouse where I did not model any openings. I just assume this is full enclosure. So these are what we call the co a cladding. So the roof is here. Uh, so in modeling this roof, uh, this is a uh, I use this one as part of the model because this will directly receive the pressure but in this model I will remove all the components the purlins and the girts yeah. so if I don't want this to be part of the MWFR especially these uh, two these two sheets no this what we call roof uh, they can act also as a diaphragm so just remove the diaphragm part or just don't assign any diaphragm uh, definition for this uh, this uh, analysis and remove the weight also of this uh, sheeting and remove the anything and and model this as a membrane not a shell okay so that uh, there is no transfer of load ah sorry there is no uh, the transfer of load from the wind is uh, is all 100% because if you model this as a shell and not a membrane some of the loads will be resisted by the shell so anyway uh, it's it's in another video no? or in some future videos about that so this wall i consider this one as uh, you consider this one as cladding not part of the uh, not part of the MWFRS, but if you, but assuming that this wall is a shear wall, then it's part of the main wind force resisting system. But as you can see, I only consider this one as a what you call that, um, uh, cladding, no? components and cladding. So I will show all of this. So this is my, uh, what you call that, uh, model. Anyway, let's go back here and let's try to understand this, uh, this slide. No? So as you can see, trust can be both MWFRS and CNC. It depends on how you intend the trust to be part of your uh, structure. So as you can see here, another example. So this is an example of trust, a gable trust frame. No? This gable trust frame. So this is a gable frame. So as you can see, if I will remove this truss, obviously it will be, uh, it, it, it will, it will make the whole structure unstable. 
So, in short, this truss is a part of the MWFRS. It is not just a component. But if you are, if it is in your judgment that this is just, uh, that, that this will not uh, uh, give instability to the structure, and without this truss, the structure will still stand, then it's part of the component. But as you can see here, if I will remove the truss, obviously, uh, the structure will not uh, be stable. It will be unstable and it will not resist loads. It will become, uh, you can see here. No? So this truss here is a uh, part of the MWFRS. So I will not design this, this one or I will not uh, up put loading here uh, or use the loading of the components and cladding. I will use the loading here uh, for the MWFRS. So this is uh, an example of the truss that is part of the MWFRS. But if your truss, let's say if your truss is just uh, there to support the roof sheeting and without that truss, like for example truss in some uh, residential home, that without the truss, your home will still stand then you consider the truss as a component. So the load of that truss will be from the procedure uh, indicated in NSCP 2015 for components and cladding. Do not use MWFRS. But in this case, in my case, uh, I will use MWFRS. So ETABS, uh, the auto wind loading of ETABS, you can see in the definition load patterns, the auto wind loading of ETABS is uh, more on focus on the MWFRS, particularly the directional procedure. So this is the directional procedure of the, anyway, our gas factor is 1.85. So we have uh, other lectures about this one on why, but the original part of it, it, it is rigid, it is 0.85. Okay, I will just discuss this in later videos. So anyway, uh, this ETABS uh, is a uh, computation for the MWFRS and that components and planning. But, oh, but you can try to design your components and uh, components here by individually inputting loads that you have uh, that you have uh, computed no? or from the from the codes from the NCP. And you try to import the code here, you can try. So later in the video, I will show you how to design purlins uh, as part of the component or as part of the components and cladings because purlin is a component. The girts, I will try to show you a video about that. Even the truss that is a component, not the not a part of the main wind force resisting system of, or MWFRS, uh, we can try to design using these uh, ETABs. No? So uh, let's go back to our ano, here to uh, this topic. So as you can see, these are what I am saying. We really need to know the difference between the MWFRS and the components and cladding because it is very important that uh, proper load, proper loading should be uh, used for different system. So if you know that your system or your element that you would want to design is a part of the main wind force resisting system or the MWFRS, use this, uh, use chapter 27, 28, 29, and if you, if, you, uh, no, if you have a wind tunnel, use this wind tunnel procedure. No? But if you are sure that your uh, elements are components, let's say you just want to design purlins or girts, then use C and C. Do not use MWFRS. But uh, it is important that in considering truss, uh, it's also uh, it's also important to use both. No? Uh, if it is a truss that is used as MWFRS, use it as a MWFRS. And you can also use uh, components and cladding uh, procedures or wind loads on C and C for the elements of the truss. So anyway, uh, it's, it's up to the judgment of the designer. So as you can see, this uh, this chaptering is from ASC 7-16, but the equivalent of this uh, different chapters is for chapter 26, 
section 207A, 207B, and so on and so forth. So, uh, as you can see, as I've said earlier, the auto wind load feature, because ETABS has an auto wind load feature, as, as I have shown you earlier, is focused on chapter 27. So, uh, the limitation of auto wind load feature of ETABS is that it does not have a uh, what you call that internal pressure so it's it's another part of it's another lesson that i will try to discuss the internal pressure but i will show you a strategy on how we can include the internal pressure so i think that's it okay uh thank you and i'm uh, sorry uh so the difference between the i uh, know i will show you no so the difference between the directional procedure is that Directional procedure uh, from the word direction uses the different scenarios in which uh, we we need to or or some load cases no? we should uh, consider different directions so we should consider the direction from the east to the west and west to the east and uh, from north south or uh, like like I say uh, later videos I will show you that uh, some there is what we call the normal to the ridge and parallel to the ridge. So that is directional procedure. So directional procedure is much more, um, gives us a, a much more correct or much more um, uh, right right calculation. But this will take time. No? It's, it's, it gives us a more accurate calculation. At it, uh, it, it's it's a rely reliable. No? Directional procedure is reliable. It is used more than uh, more than a decade ago. This this direct or two decades ago, directional procedure is used in 1990s. So we also have what we call the newer, the envelope procedure. It's just uh, it does not consider the direction of the wind. It's a simplified approach. It's not uh, it cannot be used in all in all structure, but directional procedure can be used. Both of them have simple procedures. No? There are simple procedure for directional procedure. There is also a simple procedure for envelope procedure. So, as you can see, envelope procedure does not take into account the directionality of the wind. No? But it is a simpler method. No? So, it's, it's much sim it's simpler. But I will not show you how we can do this because this is much easier. No? Uh, you, you can just see it in the code and input it in what you want but unfortunately uh, the auto wind load feature of uh, ETABS is not focused on envelope procedure because envelope procedure is just inputting the load directly it's just uh, let's say um, uh, just create a load pattern of it no? just create a load pattern and call it uh, wind also but uh, just uh, user defined no? So I, I, it's really the, doesn't need to be to have a discussion on envelope procedure. But in the future, if I have time, I will also discuss it in the procedure. But I, we will focus here in the directional procedure, okay? And so this envelope procedure is easier. So envelope procedure uh, cannot be used mostly in all structure, like I said earlier. And as you can see, uh, this method is simpler. And can be used for structures that are not highly sensitive to wind loads. Uh, in the Philippines, uh, wind loads is very important because uh, there is uh, uh, Philippines is a typhoon region. We should not uh, consider all the structures as uh, not highly sensitive, but we consider we must consider all structure as highly sensitive. Also, in the case of earthquake. Uh, both earthquake and wind is important. Uh, we should never underestimate wind because, as you can see, uh, we are in a typhoon hit region. Anyway, this is uh, this is just the topic here, and thank you, and see you in the next lesson.